watching the full story of Halo 5 before you play Infinite by Game uh, Gaming Bolt. So me and Soldier Pat are just going to do a quick watch along or react, I guess you could say. Uh, since we're not playing Halo 5 uh, and since it's only on Xbox. So this is the final game until tomorrow Halo Infinite releases, which I'll be playing it. Pat will be playing it. Uh, unfortunately, no co-op, but uh, we'll both be doing our own playthroughs. So anyways, uh, I guess three, two, one. We're now approaching the final leg of our full story recap of the Halo series. Last time we talked about Seven. Halo 4, which ended in dramatic fashion with the death of Cortana and a new threat to the galaxy emerging. Now we're moving on to Halo 5 Guardians, which frankly is a little bit of a mess, but obviously it's going to be crucial Oof. to what happens in Halo Infinite, so let's mm. dive right in. Halo 5 Guardians is set about eight months after the ending of Halo 4, and much like Halo 2 before it, it splits its attention between two perspectives, each with their own That's stories. Keys. First, of course, we have yeah. the Master Chief, who's reeling with the loss of Cortana and everything he's been through. In the time between Halo 4 and 5, Master Chief was reunited with Blue Team, a squad of Spartan soldiers he used to fight with before the events of Halo Combat evolved. In addition to the Chief hmm. himself, Blue Team is compromised of elite sniper Linda, the scout and one of the Chief's closest friends, Kelly, and hand-to-hand -hand specialist Frederick, who's technically Blue Team's highest ranking Spartan, but still defers to the Chief's judgment. Then we have Fire Team Osiris, another squad of newer generation Spartan soldiers. Ah. Led by Deuteragonist, Oni agent, and former assassin Jameson Locke, Fire Team Osiris also consists of combat technician and engineer Holly Did you see Tanaka, that ODST? political liaison yeah. and intelligence oh, agent shit, Olympia that's Luke Cage. Vale, and former ODST oh, Edward yeah. Buck, who of course was one of the primary characters in Halo 3 ODST as well. As Halo 5 kicks off, elite warrior <laughs> Jewel Madama's Splinter Covenant faction is still at large and sowing chaos, and events are kicked into motion when the UNSC is contacted by Dr. Catherine Halsey, who claims to have information about a series of impending forerunner attacks on humanity. The mission to extract her from the planet of Kamchatka, which is occupied by Jewel Madama's Covenant faction, falls to the UNSC Infinity, now fully recovered from the battering it took at Requiem eight months ago. Aboard the ship, Thomas Lasky, who's now the captain of the UNSC Infinity, commands Fireteam Osiris to head to Kamchatka and extract Halsey. Led by Locke, Fireteam Osiris lands on the planet and makes its way to Halsey's coordinates while fighting their way through the Covenant, but discovers, bafflingly enough, a cool that for some man. inexplicable reason, the Covenant forces the and the Prometheans seem to have turned on each they other are and are battling against yeah. each other. <laughs> the Covenant as Locks? such are weakening, and yeah. there's only the opportunity. Each. Fireteam Osiris fights Our his Buck. way through enemy forces. Uh, Locke eventually succeeds in that, killing Jewel yeah, Madama, reaching Locke. Halsey, and safely getting her back to the UNSC Infinity. Aboard the ship, however, it turns out the Madama's Splinter Covenant faction is the least of their worries, because according to Halsey, <laughs> they're all facing a much bigger threat. Here, Halo 5 switches gears to none other than the Master Chief, who, alongside Blue Team, is on a mission concerning the derelict Oni research vessel Argent Moon which was captured by Covenant forces. Chief and Blue Team kill the straggling Covenant forces aboard the vessel that are stripping it for parts, but while there, something strange happens to Master Chief. He has a mysterious vision of Cortana activating a massive mechanical winged monstrosity of some sort, and while there is much about the vision that he doesn't understand, it seems to be directing him to the planet Meridian. At this moment, however, Blue Team realizes that a Covenant fleet is approaching the Argent Moon, and quickly decides that its best move now is to scuttle the ship to prevent it from falling into enemy hands. But, while their orders are to return to the UNSC Infinity after the vessel has been destroyed, Master Chief, hoping to get to Cortana, who he's believed to be dead for eight months, redirects Blue Team to disobey their superiors and instead head to Meridian. Aboard the UNSC Infinity, Captain Lasky is forced to brand Blue Team as deserters. But, as Halsey informs Lasky, Cortana is a far bigger threat to them all right now. Though it was believed that she was destroyed in her encounter with the Didact, 
Halsey reveals that Cortana somehow managed to gain access to the Domain, which was the name the Forerunners had given to their quantum information repository of vast amounts of knowledge a hundred thousand years ago. She managed to gain control of the Domain, healing her rampancy in the process, and became convinced that she and the created, other artificial intelligences scattered throughout the galaxy, should be the ones to inherit the Forerunners' mantle of responsibility. Which, in short, means that she thinks that she and her fellow artificial intelligences should rule over all the sentient beings of the galaxy and bring peace and harmony oh, I don't like all that. under their rule. Hmm. The catch, of course, is that Cortana is now completely driven to do that, and is willing to do so by any means necessary. Halsey believes that she's looking for something that will help her inherit the mantle, and suspects that she might be manipulating Master Chief, and in turn, the rest of Blue Team. Lasky orders Locke and Fireteam Osiris to head to Meridian, capture Blue Team, and bring them back to the UNSC Infinity. On Meridian, Osiris is contacted by Sloane, the governor of the independent human outer colony on the planet. Sloane, interestingly enough, is an old AI that's in the stages of rampancy. Locke and Osiris, however, agree to help him fight off Promethean forces that have been attacking colonists, and in exchange, Sloane helps them in their pursuit of Master Chief. On their pursuit, the Spartans of Fireteam Osiris also cross paths with the Warden Eternal, General an old I mean the forerunner Warden. Promethean AI that has long served as the guardian of the Domain, <laughs> and has the ability to take control of several different Promethean bodies. When Cortana broke through into the Domain and took control over it, she outsmarted the Warden as well, and he now serves as her enforcer. Fireteam Osiris defeats the Warden's form and proceeds forward, discovering where exactly it is that the Chief is headed. He's headed to a Guardian, a massive winged machine that looks a lot like the one that the Chief saw in his vision aboard the Argent Moon. What exactly is a Guardian, though? Well, think of them as devastating peacekeeping weapons. The Forerunners built these massive weapons to enforce the mantle long ago, and each Guardian was equipped with several weapons for that purpose, such as powerful EMP blasts and pulses that it could emit to disable any so and all electronics, weaponry, and anything else of the like in its vicinity. There aren't any multiple the mantises to take that out. Various yeah. guardians on a number of planets throughout the galaxy, and Cortana intends to take control of them all and use them for her plan. Osiris fights through Promethean forces as it gives chase to Master Chief and Blue Team, but ultimately, Locke is the only one who manages to catch up with them. He takes on Chief in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but predictably enough, loses the fight. Upon neutralizing Locke, Master Chief and Blue Team board Meridian's Guardian. It's revealed, however, that Sloane, the rampant governor AI of Meridian, had been working with Cortana all along. He was contacted by her before all of this went down, which allowed him to evacuate many of his colonists from the planet, and he now intends to join with Cortana and help her realize her vision of the galaxy. The Guardian charges up its slipspace drive, emitting EMP pulses that devastate Meridian around it, and flies off. Locke and the rest of Fireteam Osiris return to the UNSC Infinity, where thankfully they at least know where to head next. Dr. Halsey has deduced that there's another Guardian on the planet of Sankhelios, the homeworld of the alien race referred to as the Elites. The UNSC Infinity's AI Roland, meanwhile, informs them that the distinct sounds that the Guardian on Meridian was emitting as it was fleeing the planet was actually a set of slipspace coordinates that they could follow by inputting it into the Guardian of St. Helios. With a plan firmly in mind, the ship heads to the How planet. Convenient. The Chief yeah. and Blue Team, meanwhile, are still aboard the Meridian Guardian and find that they've now <coughs> arrived at another planet, an ancient, lush forerunner world their paths soon cross with the Warden Eternal, in a different body this time, but upon deciding that Master Chief and Blue Team are a threat to Cortana's goal, he attacks them. The Spartans manage to defeat the Warden, and promptly afterward, Master Chief is finally contacted by Cortana, who explains to him that when they defeated the Didact eight months ago, his ship crashed with fragments of Cortana still lingering on. It was here that she found the Domain and managed to gain control of it. She tells Master Chief her exact location on the planet, at the access point of the Domain, and asks Blue Team to find her there. Meanwhile, the UNSC Infinity has arrived at Sanghelios, and Fireteam Osiris is inserted into the planet. Sanghelios, as it turns out, has plenty of issues of its own right now. Thelva Dam, better known to Halo fans as the Arbiter, now leads the Sanghelis with the Swords of Sanghelios. 
who are fighting against the Splinter Covenant faction. Mm -hmm. The Covenant, meanwhile, are focused first and foremost on killing the Arbiter in an attempt to take control of the planet. A good chunk of Halo 5 after Locke and Osiris' arrival on Sanghelios is focused on the conflict against the Covenant, as the fire team assists the Arbiter and his forces against the Covenant. Ultimately, the Arbiter leads a final attack against the remaining Covenant forces, while Locke and Osiris fight their way to the Guardian. Though they are once again obstructed by the Warden in another body, they defeat the Promethean once again, and arrive at the Guardian just as it's powering up and preparing jump into slipspace. In the nick of time, Fireteam Osiris manages to get aboard the Guardian as it jumps into slipspace, while down on the surface, the Arbiter and his soldiers sweep through straggling Covenant forces. The Guardian lands, and immediately upon arriving at the Forerunner planet, Locke attempts to contact Master Chief, though the squad of Spartans soon encounters the monitor AI of the planet 031 Exuberant Witness. She explains that she's been locked out of her own planet systems ever since Cortana and the Warden took control of the domain. The AI explains the full extent of Cortana's plans to attain the Forerunner's mantle and use the Guardians to enforce her vision of peace over everyone in the galaxy by any means necessary, regardless of whether or not anyone accepts her and her created the other AIs that she's drawing to her cause as their rulers. With the help of Exuberant Witness, Fireteam Osiris sets out to find Blue Team and stop Cortana, though things don't exactly go to plan from that point forward. As Master Chief and Blue Team make their way to Cortana, they have another run-in with the Warden, and soon they realise that Cortana has been leading them in circles to buy herself some time, as she prepares to power up the domain system in full in order to use the Guardians. The Warden, meanwhile, seems hell-bent on eliminating Master Chief and Blue Team entirely, even though he claims to act as Cortana's defender and the enforcer of her goals. Cortana, of course, doesn't want the Master Chief dead, and ultimately a confrontation between her and the Warden leads to Cortana destroying the Promethean and all of its bodies. Afterward, though Master Chief tries to talk Cortana out of her plan, she traps him and Blue Team in a forerunner stasis pod known as a Cryptum. By now, Cortana's plan has well and truly kicked into gear. Guardians are being deployed, and hundreds of AIs from across the galaxy are arriving to join her cause and become one of the created. Fireteam Osiris attempts to stop Cortana from fleeing from the planet with the Cryptum, but of course meet heavy resistance on the way. Cortana means to keep Master Chief and the rest of Blue Team in stasis for 10,000 years, by which time she'll have properly established her hold over the galaxy. With Exuberant Witness's help, however, Locke and Osiris fight through Promethean forces and win control for the Monitor AI. As Cortana sends her guardians ahead throughout the galaxy and prepares to follow them, Osiris manages to pry the Cryptum from her control and snatch it away, just as Cortana's guardian itself jumps into slipspace. Master Chief and Blue Team are freed from the Cryptum by Fireteam Osiris, but all over the galaxy, things quickly begin crumbling. Cortana and the Created begin shutting down UNSC control all over the galaxy with the help of the Guardians, and start taking control of it themselves. That said though, she manages to track down the UNSC Infinity. The ship's AI Roland, who hasn't defected to Cortana, begins a string of random slipspace jumps so that Cortana doesn't catch them, which they plan to keep up until they can come up with a better way to fight back against her and her Created. As Halo 5 comes to a close, Fireteam Osiris, Blue Team, The Arbiter and Halsey regroup on Sanghelios. Meanwhile, finishing the game on legendary difficulty also adds a final cutscene that shows an unknown Halo ring powering up as Cortana hums in the background, setting the stage for the events of Halo Infinite. And that's it for Halo 5 Guardians. When we return for our 8th and final instalment in our Halo recap series, we'll talk about Halo Wars 2, which also leads into the events of Infinite, and introduces the Banished, who will serve as the primary antagonist of the upcoming shooter. So, what are your thoughts on this? Go ahead I don't like and share that at all. in the comments below. <laughs> I, thought, I thought Cortana was evil because of, like, rampancy, but no, she magically healed that. Yeah. And then just turned evil. Just, just cause. I still wait. It wait. So she healed him. I thought. Yeah, she. Yeah, she said. Or the the dude said. Oh, uh, when she put herself in the uh, dialect or 
whatever the thing he's called. Oh. Um, it healed her rampancy. <laughs> so she was, she was at a hundred percent capacity during this time. Huh. Yeah. Somehow. Up, Berta. Yeah. So. Huh. So is she the antagonist for? Yeah. Next, yeah I she, guess. Yeah, she's the antagonist for Halo Five and Infinite. Yeah, I might, I might watch a uh, recap of um. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Halo One and Two Wars One and Two. So it says that the banished are part. Um. Um. But I'm gonna do off uh stream. Yeah, 